Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So on January 23rd this year, an article appeared on women's website Refinery29, written by apparent feminist Vicky Spratt. It was entitled, The Dangerous Rise of Men Who Won't Date Woke Women, an ominous and leading title if ever there was one. The article was sparked by British actor Lawrence Fox, who had garnered quite a bit of attention in the few days prior by appearing on BBC Question Time and saying a couple of things that you really wouldn't expect to come out of the mouth of a screen actor, like this. Meghan has agreed to be Harry's wife, and then the press have torn her to pieces. Call it by its name, it's racism. It's torn not racism. To pieces. You can't she just... has been torn to pieces. It's not racism. It absolutely no, it's is. We're and... the most tolerant, lovely country uh, uh, in Europe. You are a white, privileged male who has oh, no experience. Oh. I mean, can I just... I can't I... help what I am. I was born like this. It's an immutable so characteristic. So, therefore, so to call me a white, privileged male is to be racist. Unfortunately. You're being racist. And this. The All over the place. Yeah, the carbon footprint huge, but we, we make up for it by preaching to everyone how they should change their lives. <laughs> that one is my personal favourite. In addition, Lawrence had appeared on a podcast hosted by writer James Dellingpole and revealed that he had a policy of not dating woke women under 35, claiming they are, and I quote, absolutely bonkers. I mean, he's not wrong. And the reasons he gave, other than the fact that they are bonkers, were that they were primed to be victims and that they were told that they were living in a tyrannical patriarchy. However, rather than offering a solution to this, Lawrence said that all they want instead is a matriarchy, so the exact same system that they decry, but women in charge instead. Now, I thought those were truly excellent observations of woke feminist women under 35, but obviously Vicky Spratt saw it differently. And look, fair enough. She is obviously a woke woman under 35, so it's understandable that she might take it a little bit personally. They always do. However, Vicky's response surprised even me. Rather than just hurling the usual woke women insults of misogynist, chauvinist, bigot, etc., she went one step further and linked Lawrence's dating preferences to the rise of violent right-wing misogynistic terrorism. Make no mistake, the far right is already capitalizing on Fox's words, gassing him up and turning him into an icon. He has added to their backlash and given it oxygen. Every time he is invited onto a TV or radio show to talk about it, that oxygen will cause the backlash to burn hotter and faster, irrespective of whether we're watching it or not. It's important not to trivialize this anti-woke, anti-women backlash. In the end, it's only by paying attention to it that we can understand it and do something about it. Okay, so needless to say, Vicky's reaction to Lawrence Fox saying that he wouldn't find her sexually attractive because, let's face it, that's where the upset really is, was a tad hysterical. I mean, to say that someone asserting that he wants to date women with similar values to his is somehow going to incentivize the so-called far right to commit acts of violence is quite the leap to make, particularly when the Vicky Spratt brand of feminism tends to define far right as anyone to the right of Bernie Sanders. But the whole thing raises a larger, rather interesting point. What role, if any, should politics play in people's dating preferences? Is it somehow prejudice to only want to date within your own ideological camp? Or is it no more outrageous than preferring people who like skiing or not wanting to date anyone who doesn't like Italian food? Well, I guess the answer lies in the reasons you have for including politics as a make or breaker. In my single days, I never even considered a person's politics as even a factor, let alone a deal breaker. I personally don't think politics should come into play when deciding who to date or not to date. I mean, after all, everyone is entitled to their own opinions and mingling with people who disagree with us is how we learn and indeed, how we bond. Also, by the way, if you can hear a weird noise in the background, it is pouring with rain outside, like unbelievably so. I can, however, understand not wanting to date someone if their politics are extreme, either leftwards or rightwards. I am not a fan of extremists because, among other things, their views tend to inherently lead to violence if followed to their logical conclusion. And in the case of woke feminist women, Sorry, but their views are both fringe and extreme. The majority of women simply do not hold those views, not just on the right, but also those on the mainstream left. See the video description for sources. 
And therein lies the point of difference between leftists, conservatives, and their various dating habits. Conservatives tend to have a good idea of what is normal leftism and what is extreme leftism. This is because we don't, as a point of principle, dismiss people who disagree with us as wrong or stupid without at least considering their views first. So-called progressives, on the other hand, seem to think that all conservatives, or at least anyone who doesn't openly hate Donald Trump, are somehow extremists and will not even discuss the matter. This is because the woke crowd doesn't see themselves as either fringe or extreme, as they see their views played back to them in the media and in popular culture every single day relentlessly. So if you are of that political persuasion, then why would you think anything other than everyone agrees with me? However, despite how they see themselves and considering uh, recent election results, their views technically are both fringe and extreme, and as such quite off-putting for your everyday person. Hence the fact Lawrence Fox isn't quite so keen on dating woke women under 35. Oh, no. oh we should film this. <laughs> it's also why Vicky Spratt thinks the rise of men who won't date woke women is dangerous. She hasn't realized that woke views, although they dress themselves up as bright and shiny and all things good, are actually militant and totalitarian and wholly unpalatable to the rational-minded person. To her, Lawrence's rebuke is a rebuke of all reasonable women, rather than of a small noisy group of post-adolescent gals who are, compared to your average person, indeed bonkers. However, surely there comes a point where you insisting that you won't date people with certain politics sits in the bigotry category. Remember, the definition of bigotry includes prejudice against different opinions and beliefs. It's not just to do with race, religion, gender, etc. To be precise, and according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, bigotry is defined as obstinate or intolerant devotion to one's own opinions and prejudices, the state of mind of a bigot. So if you not only disagree with somebody else's opinion, but are also intolerant of them, then you're a bigot. And in order to be intolerant of someone, you have to be disapproving of or refusing to accept ideas or ways of behaving that are different from your own. As such, if your motivation for refusing to date people with different politics is either wanting to avoid people with extreme fringe militant leading to violence views, or a simple desire to find someone with multiple common interests including politics, well, that doesn't fall under the definitions of bigotry or intolerance. However, if your motivation is because not only do you disagree with, but you also don't accept opposing political viewpoints, or you consider people who hold opposing viewpoints to be lesser than you or implicitly dumb or evil, then yeah, sorry, you're a bigot falls right under the definition of intolerant and bigotry. Now, on that note, you'd have to admit that sounds a lot like the perception the regressive left has of right-wingers. And not just the fringe right, but also of your everyday mainstream conservative. Interesting that those who allegedly most oppose bigotry and prejudice display the most blatant bigotry and prejudice when it comes to those who disagree with them. But look, you know, consistency has never been the strong suit of so-called progressives. If they didn't have double standards, they wouldn't have any standards at all. Which is why it's kind of ironic that Vicky Spratt is admonishing Lawrence Fox for not wanting to date woke women when the regressive left is actually notorious for refusing to date right-wingers, particularly if they support Donald Trump. So much so that over the past four or so years, a number of dating apps for conservatives have sprung up, such as Donald Daters, Writer, and Patreo, as a result of the phrase, Trump voters swipe left, that has popped up on Tinder profiles since the 2016 election results. OkCupid okay also has some interesting numbers. In 2017, the site started putting Trump-related questions and categories into their profile setup process. The website, who, according to its head honchos, knows full well that its users tend to lean progressive, found that 74% of respondents answered hell no on the question of Trump, with only 4% answering hell yes. The less hardcore yes and no came in at 7 and 15% respectively. You can also see it in the way left-wing opinion commentators write about Trump supporters. Over the past few years, headlines such as break up with that Trump supporter, conservatives are whining because no one wants to date them, why I'd never date a Trump supporter, Donald Trump is destroying my marriage, young conservatives 
conservative sad no one in DC wants to date them, if you are married to a Trump supporter, divorce them, etc, etc, exist in frighteningly large numbers on the internet. I mean, think about it. Change the words Trump supporter or conservative to black or Jewish and you've got a whole nother ball game. It also turns out that left-wing Democrats even have trouble being friends with Trump supporters. According to a 2017 Pew Research poll, 47% of left-leaning Democrats, which are the kind of regressive leftists I'm talking about, said if a friend voted for Trump, it would actually put a strain on their relationship. The overall number of Democrats was 35%, and interestingly enough, the most intolerant of Trump supporters were white Democrats at 40%. Now compare this to Republicans. Only 13% of Republicans overall said that if a friend voted for Hillary Clinton, it would put a strain on their relationship. Perhaps part of this left-wing intolerance for conservatives and Trump supporters can be explained by the fact that Democrats seem to live in more homogenous areas in terms of views. As we know, Democrats tend to cluster around the densely populated coastal cities, whereas Republicans can be a little bit more rural. As such, another Pew Research poll from 2016 revealed that 47% of those who planned to vote for Hillary Clinton didn't have any close friends who were voting for Trump. This is opposed to 31% of Trump supporters who do not have any close Hillary voting friends. This disdain for right-wing viewpoints from those on the regressive left is at least in part to do with the fact that they tie politics in with morality and emotion. They think politicians should be moral leaders rather than just functional legislators, which is how conservatives see politicians. Conservatives don't generally like government or politicians floating around them. We want them to be efficient at their jobs, but we don't see them as bastions of morality. That's what community leaders, family members, and for some conservatives, religious figures are for. Now as such, since the regressive left is so obsessed with morality in politics and are so convinced that Trump is a racist, sexist, bigoted, blah blah blah, and therefore so are all of his supporters because of how the media brainwashed them in 2015, why would they want anything to do with them anyway? I mean, why would they even discuss ideas with Trump supporters since it's all bound to be just white supremacist drivel? As the saying goes, the right think the left are naive and the left think the right are evil. Big difference. So when it comes to woke women like Vicky Spratt admonishing men for not wanting to date them, they really, really need to do some self-reflection. If progressives are casting all conservatives or Trump supporters as inherently evil extremist bigots and refusing to even associate with them, let alone date them, then they really should take a step back, look at themselves, and work out where the true bigots lie. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me. Mm -hmm.